I spent 300 days in the Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. Now this is a compilation video comprising three videos I've already uploaded on the channel. So if you enjoyed it the first time, um, I'm sure you'll enjoy it the second time. So we begin our journey on a beautiful date with the one and only Princess Zelda. These tunnels are deeper than I thought. Apparently some gloomy substance has been infecting the villages of Hyrule and it's our job to go and stop it. I thought I dealt with all that malice stuff in the last game. Well anyway, as we press down into the cave, Zelda stops to check out my sweet boots <laughs> and worries about me taking out a couple of keys. Did you not see the beast I took down not that long ago? Dark Beast Ganon? Like come on, I got a couple of bats. Anyway, from here we dive a little deeper into these tunnels and stumble upon... Mummy? No, that's the Demon King. Uh, we got this, bro! No! All our hearts! It shattered the blade! And with that, the Demon King began the upheaval, and we lost Zelda into the depths. But apparently I'm fine, and now I have this sweet new hand, and it has claws. Meow. Holy moly, we're in the sky. Well, the only logical thing to do now is jump, right? <laughs> now nah, we're okay, and man, is this game beautiful. I set off into the sky island and meet this little dude. He has Zelda's purr pad for some reason. Wait, what game is that that you're playing on there? Well, anyway, I see a big shrine over in the distance, and it just so happens that that's actually the Temple of Time, a temple which appears in so many Zelda games, but we can't get inside. This goat man, however, named Raru appears and scares the pants off me before revealing that it is in fact his cool arm that we have now. Sadly though, its power has been weakened and he tasks us with restoring its power. To do so, we have to find the blessings of light, which can be found within shrines. So, off we go. Heading inside the first shrine, we gain access to the Ultra Hand, essentially an improved magnesis from the previous game. It lets you pick up objects and attach them together. So using this power, I attach this hook to this board and ride over to the altar, earning us our first light of blessing, purging some darkness from us. As I exit the shrine off into the distance, I see shrine number two. So off I go as the sun begins to set. Arriving at shrine number two, we gain access to the fuse ability. You need this ability to enhance all the weapons that you find as they've been weakened by the Demon King's upheaval. We complete the shrine and so concludes our first day. Leaving the shrine begins day number two as we slowly work our way through the Great Sky Island, discovering new creatures like this thing and finding Zoanite, which will be super important later on, as well as finding some good old Koroks. <laughs> and let's go. <laughs> gotcha, 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 gotcha. Oh, baby, gotcha loot. Portable pot. Okay, that's new. Before we could get to the next shrine, however, we discovered some construct being. But using the power of the Ultra Hand, we can pull its block down and destroy it. Take that, you... you box thing, you... Anyway, using its part, we can fuse a really strong weapon together for later on. Finally reaching the next shrine, we gain access to the Ascend ability. An ability vital to our success. Just keep swimming, just keep swimming. Yeah, this never gets old, I promise. Exiting the shrine, it seems another day is coming to a close. But first, I developed a flying vehicle to make our way back to the Temple of Time. This is awesome! We're flying! We should have just enough power to open the door now. What's this thing? Oh, Zelda, you're here! Yo, you want a handshake? Oh yeah, it's good to see you, brother. How you doing? Doing so grants us the ability of time manipulation. That's right, time manipulation allowing us to reverse the flow of time for a certain object, meaning we can get to the top of this temple, but trying to get inside the next door, however, seems unfruitful, as we are still too weak. So off to another shrine we go. Some time puzzle shenanigans later, we complete it and grab our final blessing on the Great Sky Island. This gets us inside the door where Zelda steals my Master Sword. Hey, I worked really hard for that in the last game. Link. 
You must find me. Is this some big game of tag? Give me my master sword back. Well, anyway, slightly healed up now, we can finally jump down to Hyrule and begin our great open adventure. Man, I'm in love with this game. It's just Breath of the Wild, but somehow even better. Continuing day three, we arrive in a new town of sorts. And who's this? Oh my god. I know you're a hundred years old or something, but damn, Pura, you're looking good. She rejects me, however, and tells me to go up to the castle to meet with a guard. While up there, though, we see what seems to be Zelda hanging out just on this random pillar and then turning into a ball of light and then just flying away. Wonder what's up with that. We tell Pura what happens and she seems to think if we go investigate these four anomalies that are happening out in Hyrule, we may gain some understanding of what's happening. And so after stocking up on some things in this hidden bunker, off we go on our grand adventure. And what better way to get started than by getting launched 1000 kilometers in the air. So for those wondering, one day in game is equal to 24 minutes in real life. The only time time doesn't progress is in a shrine. And so even if I spend 24 minutes in a shrine trying to solve this goddamn rotation puzzle, it's all good. So for the next few days, I go around solving shrines and gain blessings before stumbling upon some weird hole in the ground. Into Satan's butthole we go! Oh my god. Oh, there was a floor there. What the heck? There's a whole us underground under Hyrule? Is this low rule? No, it's the depths. Yeah, I know. I was making a joke because low rule is in, you know, the others. You know, never mind. There is so much gloom down here, and if we stand too long in it or take damage from a gloom enemy, we permanently lose health until we receive natural light. We then find some plump, bulbous looking thing which does light up part of the depth and also restore any health loss to the gloom effect. Now time still does progress down in the depths and I spent a whole day just running around down here lighting up bulbs but eventually we did stumble upon something of interest. A mine of sorts with a zony construct from before. Talking to it gave us the ability auto build. This ability will become my best friend. Any structure I build can be saved for quick construction. If all the parts are around you, you can select the schematic and build what you need super quick. Yo! That is way better than doing it the other way. Oh my god. <gasps> Wait, is that Koga? But apparently these people work for the master of the Yiga clan, Koga. Yeah, that guy from the first game. I guess when he fell down that hole, he ended up here. Wait, we have to fight him? Oh, he's made his vehicle. Oh, damn. I'm not ready for this. What the heck? And so begins our first proper boss battle. Riding his car, we knock him off and spin to win, baby. Spin attack, spin to win, baby. Upon defeating him, we are given a schematic to quick craft a flying vehicle. If for some reason we don't have the parts around, turns out we can either drop them into the world with one of those Garcha bubbles, or spend a few Zoanite and it'll fill in what's missing. But it's better off just to use Garcha, as there is a couple more uses for the Zoanite. So on my plane, I got up and went for a trip through Gloomville. That's what I'm calling this place now. I spend the whole day lighting up more of the mine and follow Koga to wherever he went off to. Day 10 was more of the same, but this time I find the Goofy Goober. I'll battle you. I'll beat you and steal that power back from you. I don't know how you're going to do that. And also, I have no arrows, so I don't know how I'm going to do this. And he's getting on the plane, so that's probably... He's about to fucking... He's trying to... He's trying to flame run me! What the hell? That was sick! Now we inflict mad damage on the spin! Spin to win, Beyblade, let it rip! My weapons at this point do barely any damage to him, and my only way to attack him was by using the jump pad. Unfortunately for me, he destroyed it, and such, I had no way to continue this fight. I'll be back, Koga. Mark my words. 
Heading back up to the surface today, I started making my way towards Kakariko Village, but spent some time updating our map by being launched into the sky and completing a few shrines. We were greeted with our first Blood Moon, increasing the difficulty of the enemies around us, but that wasn't a problem for me though, since I was finally starting to get the hang of combat again. I delivered a Korok to his friend today as I approached the old Colosseum, where once a Lionel lay wait. This time, however, was a much more fearsome creature indeed. A goddamn Hydra? Yeah, so I wasn't about to touch that, and went back to shrine grinding. I arrive at my first horse stable, and I think I know everything, but evidently that's not true, as there is a new pony point system, which gives more of a reason to actually rest at these places. Apparently if we get high enough points, we can talk to the horse god. I decided to jump down the well behind us, and stumbled upon a well enthusiast. Okay, kind of a weird thing to be into, but if you're into wells, I'm into wells. We of course completed more shrines and found a fairy fountain. Problem was, the fairy inside said they weren't opening up unless they heard the sound of a flute. How the heck was I gonna find a flute? I really wanted the armor upgrade, but I guess it'll have to wait. This was followed by some more well exploring. Well, 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 what do we have here? Another well. <laughs> I explored the sky a bit more the following day as I got launched by yet another tower. I tried to fly from one island to another but didn't have enough energy so instead flew towards another tower. This tower perplexed me though for the longest time as I could not figure out how to get inside. I assume this family going on about the pirates down in the town had something to do with this, but no. I however did not know this at the time and headed down to the town. Laureland Village had been taken over by monsters, and those monsters were super strong as well, especially since I only have four hearts. After some quick thinking and some precise gameplay from your boy though, we defeat the creatures plaguing the town, and all the villagers return. But as the day came to a close, I handed in my blessings and finally got two more stamina vessels. You want me to get what? 15 logs and 20 Hylian rice? Nah, screw that bro, you can do that yourself. I think my job's done here. So off I went to explore more of Hyrule, but somehow found myself in a well leading down to the depths. And spent the whole rest of the day down there running around. On day 18, however, I somehow randomly found the tunic of the hero in some random spot down here. So that was super cool. The rest of the day, however, I tried to figure out this tower puzzle, but couldn't understand what he wanted. This bird was talking about mushrooms, so I thought he wanted some of those, but instead we were actually meant to use the send from the cave underneath, but I wouldn't find this out till much later. So I moved on, and as day 19 began, I finally made my way into Kakariko Village, and met the village leader, Paya. I guess that old bag Impa must have died. Oh well. Pia said she saw Zelda up in the floating ruin, but for some reason will not let us go up there and check it out ourselves, since apparently Zelda said not to. Weird, maybe she's upset about me and the whole Pura thing. So for the next couple of days, I just spent my time completing quests in the village, finding Koroks, and exploring the ruins that I was allowed to view. I then completed a few more shrines and solved this really cool time-related puzzle where I had to rest for a day. Our adventuring now took us towards Zora's Domain. There's all this muck all around the place infesting the waters, and nobody is sure how to deal with it, as it's flowing down from far, far in the sky. Don't worry guys, I've got this. I've saved this place once before, so I'll just do it again. I also got these trousers of the sky from my amiibo. And in here, something good please? Trousers of the sky! I found out that Sidon, our old friend, was at the top of Polymus Mount, and also that our old Zora tunic had been handed in for repair. And turns out, what we need to repair it was a fish that could only be found up there as well. So off I went, first off stopping by the launch tower for some map data. I of course got distracted in the sky, completing a few puzzles and doing a few gacha spits. Like building the perfect flying device as, as it goes along. Oh yeah, I see, I see what's going on here. So then, we launch it with the fan attachment. Go! This is sick. What the actual heck? I rate that on the shrine scale. Six shrines out of seven Zeldas. Day 28 though, I finally make it up to the top of the mountain. And it was good to see this old fishy friend again. Is it really you? 
My friend. Indeed it is, Sidon. How you doing, buddy? He informed me more of the problem of the muck coming down from the sky, so I tried to make my way up to the top with the help of this balloon, but we just don't make it and end up wasting our time. We did land on this other weird fish-looking island, but couldn't figure out what to do here. I continued past Zora's domain today and into Tarrytown. Good vibes all around here. We handed in our orbs and got a hard upgrade, and completed some quests for the townspeople. The quest with Mayor Hudson was especially wholesome. It's always sad to say goodbye. Back into the sky I went today, aiming to find a path for some races down in Tarrytown. I ended up taking on a construct boss again, and eventually found what I was looking for. Whee! Finish! Oh yeah, Zora's Domain. I, I, I completely forgot about that. Uh, I'm sure I'll get back to it. For now though, I aim to expand my map a little more and complete dozens more shrines spanning a couple of days. I somehow found my way back into the depths today and... Ah! Holy shit! I barely escaped with my life, distracting it with light bulbs. Okay, we escaped him. On one quarter of a heart. On a previous day, I'd acquired this map in the sky, which had led me to this secret underground mine. I spent a whole day here running through this mine when I probably should have just made a carve. You stupid. On day 37, I finally arrive at the end of the mine where we find an item that was very worth it, in my opinion. The treasure chest has led us to this point to get... Tunic of Twilight! <gasps> Yo! And for the rest of the day, we just went to a stable and get those pony points, baby! <coughs> uh. Today I made my way up to where I think Roby used to hang out, only to get ganked by some goddamn Jaegers. I would, however, get my revenge on these fellas and get given the Jaeger chest plate. Nice. From here I ended up visiting the maze island and it took me a day to complete everything in here. And apparently above this maze was another maze which we had to also complete for the true reward. But I had no way to get up there yet. I flew over to a place you could find Kilton in the last game which looked like a skull just to find another of Satan's buttholes to explore. Inside said butthole was something super cool. I had to defeat a couple of super strong enemies in here which dealt gloom damage, but upon doing so we were granted with... Wait, what? A legendary greatsword forged by a Goron craftsman for a hero who travelled through time. The exception exceptionally sharp cutting edge is a testament to the craftsman's mastery. This is from freaking Ocarina of Time! Oh my god, this is freaking... Awesome! But I can't help but feeling like I'm forgetting something. Hey, what about Zora's Domain? Oh, shit. Yeah. Uh, alright. Let, let's go back to Zora's Domain then. Upon arrival, I picked up my Zora's tunic so I could swim up waterfalls again, but there was many more mysteries to solve, like the one up at Toto Lake. We found a secret wall slate which upon deciphering tells us a way to solve our little muck problem. Thing was, we needed the king scale and we had no way to find the king. That was, until I listened to some little kids talking about the king's secret hideout. Something inside said hideout, we're informed why the king was hiding in here. Zelda apparently attacked him? I get being mad at me about the Pura thing, but what did the king do? Either way, he gives us the scale we need, and we head back to the island in the sky I was confused about earlier. The text taught us to shoot the king's scale through a teardrop, and on just the right angle, we can form a teardrop from the sky stones and shooting the king scale through it forms a beautiful light. With great news, we go over to tell Sidon and end up getting jumped by a goop monster. We had to use Sidon's ability to help us this time, which lets us project water at the enemy. Taking out Muck 2.0, or Hyrulean Muck, Sidon creates a way inside the light by way of drowning in a whirlpool, thus beginning our first dungeon. We solve a few puzzles and a light is sent up into the heavens, bringing down another sky island. Now finally we had a way up to where the muck was located. So it turns out there is actually a real water temple up here, and to get to it meant traversing the waterfalls, and using all the skills we'd learned up to this point. 
After a day of swimming up countless waterfalls, we finally arrive inside the temple itself. We relied on the fishman here to help us activate these water pumps to flush away the goop. All right, we got all five fountains going. You did it, Link. And now it was time to fight the boss, leader of the Hyrulean Muk army, Muktura. All right, that's interesting. Scourge of the Water Temple. Wait, what? Okay. Get ready. Let's go. Well, anyway, with Sidon's help, we were able to weaken him with damage with our water weapon. Thankfully, I had come prepared, and after a few rounds of back and forth, we take him down and finally get some answers as to what is happening with Zelda. So it turns out, Zelda is the Sage of Time, and she somehow ended up back in time thanks to the jewel she got when we met the Demon King. We learn of a bunch of other sages fighting the Demon King, but they, however, were not strong enough to defeat him and so instead, he was sealed. The original Zora Sage of Water ended up passing on the Sage power to Sidon, and he in turn grants us part of it to use. I, Sidon, the Sage of Water, swear that I will fight by your side. Please accept this. It is proof of my vow. Yo! We got an infinity stone! Let's go! Meaning now we can summon Sidon's spirit anywhere we want to aid us in battle. Well, I had my fun in Zora's domain and peace was restored, so from here I wanted to start unlocking more of the map. So off I went to a few more towers over the next few days and completed many a shrine, earning us more blessings. Then helped out a couple of Koroks, and also tried to acquire a scale from this dragon, but sadly failed before stumbling into Hatno Village. I'm surrounded by idiots. And for the next four days, I spent my time completing many side quests in the village. This lady who won't stop moaning had an idea to run for mayor after having an altercation with the current mayor. And so I had to help out these villagers by essentially spying on them. You know, the usual stuff. All that really matters is that we ended up winning a cool mushroom hat and uh, maybe now Pura will finally go out with me. This is the most beautiful thing I've ever seen in my life. No? Okay. Well, anyway, back in Hutno Village, I found out that Link and Zelda used to live here, in this house that was once suspected to be Link's old house. How cool. Maybe I should just settle for Zelda then. It was finally time to go get my revenge on Koga. He had escaped me the first time, but now, with my new gear and even Sidon by my side, we took him down easy. Do, 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 do. We got him! Let's go. All we needed was some arrows. Gaining some new schematics and also some crystallized charges. Crystallized I haven't spoken charge. about these yet, but they are important as they increase the battery size for our vehicles. I decided to give chase to Koga as he yet again ran off, and on our way we actually ran into the Mokdorok again. But it went down just as easy as the last time, earning us some more charges. On day 57 I caught up to Koga again, but this time on a boat. <laughs> I saw this boat in half! Defeating him yet again granted us some more charges and some schematics. But for now I'd have to let Koga get away as he'd run off to the far northwest corner of the map. So I instead headed up to the land and went Korok hunting. For the next few days I went exploring and ended up finding my way to East Nekluda. We completed a long ass quest where we had to take down multiple Hinoxes in multiple caves and drove around this cave for god knows how long. Oh, I know how long. A whole day. Then on day 62, I finally solved that stupid spike tower puzzle which I gave up on earlier. And all you have to do is just cover it with some wood. Duh. I headed back to the town near the castle today to go see Roby, but ended up finding that Korok guy who upgrades your weapon slot capacity. Hey! We like it. <laughs> Hopefully they learnt from the past experience of having us watch that multiple times over and it'll just be a quick skip through this this time. Nope. I'm so we got a bunch of upgrades and then Roby and this kid send us down into the depths. Doing so, we finally get access to the camera application to take hot pictures of Pura. I, I, I mean Zelda, I mean Zelda, I mean Zelda. 
and take a picture of the statue to show to the little research assistant. I headed back to Kakariko today to round out a few side quests and also take some pictures of Paya. I mean, the stone tablets, oh god damn it. But before too long, I was out of there and back out adventuring. We somehow found our way to Death Mountain and after slowly making our way to the city instead of just taking a minecart, we find the villagers are in some sort of half trance. We met up with Yunobu who used to be quite the shy giant but now has developed a bit more confidence. I picked up some fire resistant clothing in the morning at the store before heading to meet up with Yunobu at his base. He apparently saw Zelda and was gifted this mask by her, but for some reason he's been going crazy sicko mode with it, and so we have to break it. Meaning it's battle time. Bruh. Chill! Aha! Got him! And after a few hits to the dome, we break it and figure out that Zelda is headed to the top of Death Mountain. And so begins our journey up to the top. The whole day we basically spent traveling with Yunobo, launching his fat ass like a rocket at anything that got in our way, eventually reaching the top, where we saw Zelda enter the volcano before a giant demon rock monster emerged from the peak. Alright, it's time for a bomb and run, baby! We quickly make an airship and took to the skies to shoot down the foul creature with our Goron Glicky. This is sick. Is this Zelda or World of Plane? Ha! Big! That was epic. What the hell? Oh, is this going to be like a traditional temple on the inside? That would be so cool. This revealed an entrance to yet another of Satan's butthole from the peak of the volcano. Guy, and it was only appropriate that we jumped inside. Once inside, we had to traverse this deep and dark underground cave before eventually reaching the entrance to the next dungeon. What the hell? Is it though? We saw Zelda head inside this locked door where a rock ate her ass, so I happening? guess we have to save her. I just killed her, if real. I feel like I'm just chasing her around, like how it was back in Skyward Sword. What the heckin' dog? But nonetheless, it was time to solve some puzzles. It took me three full days to solve all the puzzles down here and open the locked door to save Zelda. And down it goes. It's like a crab? It's a demon rock crab! Break that shit down. The big Goron sword, it's oddly appropriate. Let's go. Let's go. Oh, we're gonna take it out easy with the big Goron sword. Got your crusty crab looking ass. We defeat the creature and Yunobu gets his sage power, allowing me to shoot people with the Goron clicky whenever I want to. Hold out your oh, are we gonna bro fist? Breakfast, PewDiePie, Maha, Maha. I'll fight by your side till the very end. Infinity Stone number two acquired. Let's freaking go. Well, with Goron Village safe, I headed out to solve some more shrines and gain some more heart containers, since I felt like I was kind of lacking in that department. I also found an interesting item called the Sage's Will, which will apparently improve the Sage's power, but we need to get four of them, so hopefully we can find some more. For the next 10 days, I literally just filled a bunch of my map and did shrines. Okay, that shrine was cool. I'll rate that on the shrine scale. Six. Mario Kart's out of Zelda. Most importantly of those shrines was the one with the maze from earlier. Now with more battery charge, I could reach the top of the Lomai Sky Labyrinth. Test of wisdom. Ooh, wisdom. Courage, strength. Wisdom is Zelda, right? We complete a puzzle where we have to touch four tablet things in order to unlock another gate down on the surface maze. Jumping from all the way in the sky, down through the ground, and into the depths, we landed in a pit where we had to fight a construct. Got him. Let's go. Pretty cool during this trial of wisdom, we explored the sky, the land, and the depths. All for some special reward. And by Hylia, was it worth it? Otherworldly evil. Evil spirit armor. <gasps> that's the... That's the original Ganondorf set. Ocarina of Time. Oh my god, that's sick. 
This sparked my quest to obtain the full set, as I wanted to look like him as soon as I could. Know your enemy and all that. I headed back to Goron Village to solve a few puzzles and shoved an eyeball into a fossil to get some money, before heading to the next maze island. These things take ages to complete, since you have to solve the maze puzzle on the ground, then the sky puzzle above, before facing the boss at the bottom. This took up a whole three days by itself, but I also did get distracted by another sky island on my way to the maze island in the sky. Is to be expected, I guess. I gathered my boots for the Ganondorf set and head off to find the headpiece. I made a quick stop at a stable and got enough points to get a dream chat with the horse god, who told me apparently there was a traveling band up near Elden Volcano. Hopefully this would be what I needed to open that fairy fountain and enhance my gear. After a beautiful sleep in the Melania bed, I stumbled upon Impa. Wait, what? I thought this old hag was dead. Apparently not though, and we see a vision from looking inside a geoglyph's tear. Inside the vision we meet the mysterious girl and Raru again who stand next to each other in every single shrine. We didn't mean to startle you. I'm sorry. It's okay. My name is Sonia. What? It's not Hylia? That's lame. Hmm, the plot thickens. Next, I went and saw another vision. This time was the moment Ganondorf awakened his power. He looks so much like Demise from Skyward Sword. It's crazy. nothing to worry about, I'm sure they'll be fine. We however ended our day arriving in Rito Village, but I didn't really want to start this quest just yet since we don't have enough days left to do it all. So I instead aimed to finish that evil spirit set. Epic. Now we get the full Ganondorf outfit. Dang, we look bad ass. Only thing that would make it better was if we were able to upgrade it. And so the goal of unlocking the fairy fountain would finally rear its head. I'm told here that she'll only open up for a violin player. And it just so happens that I found a violin player a part of a musical troupe down at a nearby stable. Only problem was that they had an issue and would only speak to the press about it. Apparently there's a news team stationed in Tabantha, and so it was time to make the trek on over there. So be it, I guess I'm joining the news team. On my way to do so, I also run into Colton and Bill Clinton, the two brothers, and finally found my use for those bubble crystals I'd been collecting. Handing enough of them in, we earn this awesome looking mystic armor. Oh, hello, when did you get here? <laughs> Oh, 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 yes, give, give, give. Yes, let's trade. You need three this time? Whatever, here you go. Oh, look at that, that looks sick. So continuing over towards Tabantha and the press, I accidentally stumbled my way into more of the Rito quest line and fought to get this little kid his bow back. Finally arriving at the Gazette, I joined the team and vowed to only report real news, no fake stuff, I promise. Visit every stable for leads. Pen, you'll head this all up. Oh, okay, so we're going to all the stables. Cool. Me and Solonge Bowser headed to get the story from the traveling band to find out it was Zelda who scared these poor people. What is this girl up to? Well, apparently that scared their horse and broke their traveling car. So I fixed it and in return they accompanied me to see the fairy where she finally appeared. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. But to my absolute shock and horror- Wait, you can't enhance this item? Oh, brother, that sucks. I thought maybe it was only because it was the first fairy spring, and if we unlocked the rest of them, maybe we could upgrade it. So as day 97 began, I went off to find the next fairy pond. She wanted to hear the sound of a horn, so we brought a horn blower over, and still... We cannot upgrade it. Near this fairy fountain though, we did get a quest from a villager about a golden horse. Sounds interesting. Apparently the golden horse had run off into the snowstorm and on my way to find it, we ran into another of those dragons. This time, however, I was brave enough to take it on. And swing to win, baby. Woo, baby, let's go. 
Okay, the Frost Gleok is getting up. But we can still hit it. Before it gets too far away. It's falling down, baby! Yo, it took a lot of damage from that. Come on, guys. Get in there! Everyone attack! Okay, it's going very high up in the sky. His arrows can't even touch it. Oh, it's just ticked it. Oh, he's preparing a huge beam blast! Oh, no, wait. What is he doing? Oh, what the? Ice storm? Ah! Up, up, and away! Woohoo! Alright! You're going down now! Hey! We did it! Let's go! We defeated our first dragon, baby! The Frost Gleok has been destroyed! We picked up Zelda's golden horse and added it to our collection before heading over to see one final vision before the end of the 100 days. Do you know of a way we could help to return Zelda back to her time? There are stories about the secret stones and a forbidden act called draconification. What? To swallow a secret stone is to become an immortal Wait. dragon, one blessed with eternal life. What? <gasps> Interesting. Another way to reach the future, though not a very quick one. So you think these stories could hint at a solution to our dilemma? Yes. But there is still more to those tales. To become an immortal dragon is to lose oneself. That is why it is forbidden. I thought maybe this could lead to a solution some way to transcend time but if you have to sacrifice your heart and mind sacrifice what makes you you i'm sorry i wish i could help more uh, back where we started so now it's confirmed zelda has time powers and if you swallow a secret stone you turn into a dragon that means probably all of the dragons out in hyrule that we've seen are actually people that have transformed well on my second last day i decided to go and open one more fairy fountain and pray that we could upgrade our gear and yet again unfortunately we cannot there is still one left to do, but on my final day, I want to do something special. So instead, I just upgrade the Twilight Armor for now, and here we are at day 100. Well, for my final day, surely I should go and do something cool, and I think you're right. So I thought, why not head into the Lost Woods, where we originally pulled the Master Sword from, and see what we can find. <gasps> what happened? Evidently, we went the wrong way. Okay, so we can't go right, we can't go left, we can't go straight. <laughs> Can we do anything in here? Bust, I'm just gonna have to assume that we can't get into the Lost Woods yet for some story-related reason. Or, I just thought, if we go into Satan's booty hole, Maybe we can get to just underneath it? And I was right, there was a platform where we could use Ascend, and look where it oh, plopped yeah. us. <gasps> right in the dead center in front of the Great Deku Tree. We're here. But there's something wrong with him. <gasps> oh no! He's been infested with gloom. What are these? Hello, Mr. Deku. He's silent. They're all silent. 
The sword's not here either. I was kind of hoping. I better head inside and see what's happening. So even though we just came up from the depths, it was time to head back down inside the great Deku Tree. Only to find... Deku Tree Chasm. Korok Grove. Interesting. Oh, f there's a hand. Hand demon. I'm still yet to kill one of these things. Come on, guys. There's just one hand left. Oh, we finally... Wait. Phantom Ganon? Wait, what? Oh! <gasps> What the fuck? What the fuck? Holy shit! I am ready for this! Alright, let's try that again. Phantom Ganon. There he is. Okay. Um. Okay, we're doing decent damage. We can even blow him back. Okay, guys, get in there! Hit him! Yeah, 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 good. Okay, that's annoying, but fine. Ah! Okay, okay, eat, 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 eat. We're doing well, we're doing... Arguably, we're doing really horrible. I don't know what his attack pattern is, how to dodge it, or how to do anything with him, but... Oh my god. Come on, guys, get in there! Attack him! He's using bloody my attack against me. Brah! Oh, that's big damage, Mr. Goron, man. Oh, sh why did I turn against back at him? Dodge it. Get back in. Hiya! We took down Phantom Ganon. Oh, let's go. Great Deku Tree. Ah, so it's you. I must apologize. I'm still quite groggy, as though I am awaking from a bad dream. You rid me of that unpleasant deep within me. Uh-huh. You are welcome. It is good to see you. Huh. Princess Zelda of Hyrule. And Link, keeper of the Master Sword. Did I put it back? Your blade has been fully restored. Oh, so it wouldn't break anymore. Go on then, Link. Draw it once more. Cool. But now it's broken again. Yo, why are you looking so badass? I need that armor. I need Great it. Great Deku Tree. Thank you so much. The potential of this fable blade may well be limitless. Truly the work of a goddess. A sword that grows ever stronger. Except it broke, the didn't master it? master sword. That's why it's called the master sword. Yo! Goosebumps! But the sword, it would seem that you no longer wield it. Where has it gone? You do not know where the master sword is. No, I do not. I see, yet I can sense it, even now. There can be no mistake. It's here? Hmm. In the sky, I feel the Master Sword's presence strongly in this area. But it's moving. Okay, let's launch. Let's launch as quick as possible. Wait, 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 wait a minute. Is it on the dragon? Surely not, right? Oh, <gasps> I think it is. <gasps> this looks like that person from the cutscene! 
She definitely turned herself into a dragon. That's crazy. Well, let's try and grab it. <laughs> oh, brother. Oh, oh, it's stamina based this time. Thankfully, I invested a bunch of stamina into this thing. Do we have enough stamina? <laughs> we do! But we still haven't pulled it. Wait, where are we? We in heaven? It's brand new, baby. Yo. So before the next 100 days began, I came up with a few goals I wanted to complete. Firstly, I want to complete every dungeon that remains. Second, witness every single vision. Thirdly, acquire and fully upgrade the champion's leathers, as well as another mystery set I hope to find. And finally, beat the final boss, the Demon King. But I don't know if I can make it there in 100 days. I guess we will find out. So to begin day 101, we start off exactly where we left off, with the Master Sword in hand. And what better way to get started than to head into a shrine. This game is just another shrine simulator after all. I like this shrine because I got to blow things. Yep, that's right. But today was a quick day because the first half of the day I just spent my time testing out the Master Sword. Beginning the next day though, I stumbled my way into a random cave. There were these two dudes banging on about some clothes hidden in a chest in here, but upon further investigation, locating this chest might be a little difficult, Ludo. Oh! <laughs> well, we just found some pants. Huh, I guess not. What does it say? To, to you who have found my treasure, these ember trousers are but one piece of my grand collection. Huh. <gasps> you have done well to find this, and I will reward you with a hint to another. The Fierce Deity Sword? Thus sparking the quest for the Fierce Deity what? Set, which was the mystery set that I wanted to fully upgrade by the end of the 100 days. Following the hints given to me in the bottle, we head to the Red Crown Citadel, sneak under a crack, and we find a secret cave. <gasps> Color Citadel Ruins. Okay, surely in here, right? Fierce Deity Arm. It has attack up. The next day, I continued my search for the other pieces, and after jumping into the top of the Skull's Eye, next to where I found the big Goron Sword previously, we defeat a giant Stalnox and claim the mask. From here we head over to Mount Daphne's and jump inside the stump to find the final piece of the set. Yo, what the heck? That's awesome and it provides permanent attack up? Yo, look at it, that's badass, what the hell? DRIP CHECK! Oh! I end off my day in yet another shrine and this one was super easy but was fun as we get to traverse across this shrine on vehicles. Beginning the next day, we headed back to the bottle and claimed the Fierce Deity Sword. Sword! Oh, that looks so cool. The Infinity Blade, basically. With this armor and sword, I'll rule the world! Okay, maybe not. From here, I head back out to the outcropping to talk to the pile of poop. I mean, come on, this weird statue thing looks like poop. Seriously. Surely I'm not the only one that thinks that. 
Well, he gives us the first piece of the Dark Link set, which is quite cool, but it also can't be upgraded, so kinda lame. But also tells us a way we can find more poop people in the underground. So off I go to find them. Today I find the first of many, and he offers not just a piece of armor which offers gloom resistance, but can also reforge the big Goron sword that I previously broke. Finding the brethren after this, we can purchase another piece of the Dark Link set, the pants. Nice. Heading back to the primary poo himself though, we are told to go find more, but I get distracted by Roby who asks me to meet him at his old research facility. Alright, off we go I guess. First thing in the morning we arrive at the lab, and Roby upgrades our Pura pad, giving us access to the sensor which can detect nearby shrines, and also unlocks the fast travel medallion, allowing me to place my own waypoint for fast travel whenever I need it. This is super handy. I caught up with the bubble man today and get close to getting those cool ninja pants, but we need way more gems. The shrine I did today was pretty cool. We had to push a ball with an impact and then ride along a minecart. Is it a hole in one? Hole in one, baby. Are you right down here? Emerging from the shrine, I headed over to complete the final fairy fountain quest, making it to the stable where we are told you can hear a flute player at night in a tree, and we find the Pied Piper himself. What are you doing up there, man? That's dangerous. Kids shouldn't be climbing trees. I guess I climb trees. That's besides the point. He needs a bunch of fireflies to show off to some kid or something, so we give them to him, and in return, we unlock the final fairy fountain as day 107 begins. I can't upgrade much right now, so instead, Instead, I head off to gather materials. So I create a checklist in order to upgrade the Fierce Deity set, Twilight set, and also the Champion's Leathers, as I'm going to need plenty of star fragments, a scale, a claw, fang, and horn from every dragon, and two of each of those from the Light Dragon. And on top of that, we have to defeat a bunch of super tough enemies like Hinoxes, Gleox, and Lynels. So I'd say we have our work cut out for us. The rest of the day, I head around to a couple of shrines, and anything involving flying a wing plane anywhere earns plus three points on the shrine rating scale. So I think I'll score this shrine, uh, four links out of five Demon Kings. That night I witnessed a vision where all the sages prepared to fight the Demon King. Okay, good luck with that guys, uh, I'm I'm, I'm sure that'll work out for you. Today I played a couple of rounds at this ding bell whack-a-mole game, but I couldn't get a good score. I'll be back someday soon, and I'll get a high score, just you watch. I never went back. We ended our day arriving at the Colosseum, inspired by chat, who thought I was ready to take on the Thunder Gleok lurking within. Okay, we took damage from that, but worth it. Okay, he's flying. He did be flying. Okay, we're doing big damage. That's good enough. Okay, I'm, I grossly underestimated the strength of this thing. We got this. Couple of spin to win Beyblades, let it rip, we'll do it. Is that all of it? Oh, it's fallen, baby! Oh, yo, it just took a shit ton of damage from the fall. And now we can let it rip! Let's go! We managed to take down the dragon by morning to receive nothing. Well, I guess some dragon parts, but that's kind of disappointing. Following on from that disappointment, I run into the light dragon and get another scale from it. This dragon is special because it's where we found the master sword previously, but not only that, there is some more lore behind it. But to find out what that is, I'll need to go watch a few more visions. So off I went to watch Raru massacre some Molduga as the Demon King's troops advanced. Take this, you! Try me! The morning of our 110th day, I completed another shrine, cheesing it as much as I could. The next shrine I did was pretty dope, as we had to get this big ball across these large gaps, and to do so, I used fusion to roll it along some tracks. Definitely scuffed, <laughs> but it worked. The rest of the day I spent in the grand underground, nope, that's in Pokemon, this place is called the depths, and barely accomplished anything. You know how it is down here. I tried to find a way to take on Koga today, but couldn't find a way into his small island. Above us was the Rito village, so I thought as I explored the village later, I may find an entrance. But for now, I kept exploring the depths and found a sea boomerang from the Wind Waker. It's a sea breeze boomerang. That's really cool. 
What the heck? I upgraded my battery size today and went for an adventure in the sky. I completed a shrine while up there which had me deliver the shrine stone to the shrine and inside was a puzzle where I had to slide ice down a hill. Please hit the sign. Hit it, hit it, hit it, hit it. Let's go. The rest of the day, I attempted to fly to the top of this huge sky pillar, but that was dumb, as you get a free teleport there from the bottom, but I didn't know that. You stupid! At the top, however, was a diving quest, where we had to jump through all these rings which unlocked a shrine. Doing this also gets you a piece of armor from a special set, but I didn't pick that up until way later, because I didn't even know it was there. I completed the shrine in the morning before spotting a dragon to go harass, so we stole its scale from it and stumbled into a cave and gather yet another bubble gem. I then travelled to the lost forest and spent a while trying to get to a shrine I could see was nearby, but that was pointless as I kept getting faded out. Leaving the lost woods, I decided it was finally time to continue the Rito quest line from the previous 100 days. We met this bird and his fam around day 90 and it was finally time to deal with it. So I headed to the top of this giant tornado, launching from boat to boat and finally making it to the top. However, I've realized that I left Talon behind somewhere. So back down I go. So I spent a full day looking for this kid. I went to where we got his bow back. I went to his tree. I couldn't find him. And I thought for real the game was glitched. So I just decided to go do something else and to come back later when I closed the game and reopened it. I ended up completing more shrines and found my way back to the Great Plateau, speaking to the statue in the old Temple of Time. I am trapped under the water behind the stone gate of the Great Plateau. Wait, what? We figure out that if we drain the water at the base of the plateau, Y'all calling me stupid, but I think I solved it. <laughs> All the fish. <laughs> the fish drowned out. That's funny. It's the poopy poop poop. He said to go back to the statue in the Temple of Time, so I went there, which gave us a longer quest to drop some eyeballs down a hole. Seems like a long quest, so I'll come back to it. I spent the rest of the day searching for Talon again, and after telling chat that he isn't at the waypoint, I go to prove them wrong. The next day we head back up to the Wind Temple, this time with Talon, and complete puzzle after puzzle, spanning multiple days as we traverse frozen gaps, blow wind into these pipes, and activate the doors to the center platform. Sesame. No, Talon! Oh, why is this bird actually so badass? I love him. Okay, let's go. Yo. Colgera! Bruh! That thing must be what's causing the blizzard! We've got to take it down! Alright, let's do it! Oh, 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 it's trying to attack me with that, but if we get in there, we can hit it. Aha! Oh, we broke through part of it. Okay, I see, I see. I see. It's gone through a freaking portal, man! Hey -ya! But super easy because you don't actually need good weapons. I wonder though, maybe since it comes up from above, if we shoot a bomb arrow... Oh! Speedrun strats! Oh, we just missed it. Okay, that's fine. Ta -da! Sick boss fight. Actually sick. Freaking 
awesome music as well. Oh my god, that... This whole area was such a vibe. I wasn't feeling it at the start, but as we went through it, man... That was a really, really, really good dungeon slash temple. Once defeating it, we learn the history of the Rita and the sages battle with the Demon King for the third time as Talon gains his sacred stone and passes on his power to us. I, Talon, the Sage of Wind, swear to fight by your side until the end. Take this. It's proof that I'm with you! I don't know why this guy is actually so cute. I love him. Hey, we got the next Infinity Stone, baby! Let's go! Thus completing the main Rito Village quest. But there was plenty more to do here, like find a way into the depths. So after climbing too many of these peaks around Rito Village, I eventually found it on the side of a wall. Well, that wasn't obvious at all. Nevertheless, it's time to go take on Koga. Two big boss fights in one day. Alright, let's do it. This time Koga's in a mech? Okay, can I craft this? I sure hope so. We had to knock him into the fence to stun him and then wail on him with some spin attacks. Get him, guys! Oh shit, he's breaking out. Let's go! Okay, that was really easy, actually. What the hell? No, oh, oh shit. But Koga had one final uh -oh. plan involving his super special Koga rocket. But I guess things don't go his way. <laughs> I began today by handing in my blessings for hard upgrades and upgrading my battery. I don't know what was special about today, but it was now that I decided to finally investigate Hyrule Castle. Launching from the cannon, we breached the gloomy defenses of the castle, landing at the shrine in the back. We complete said shrine and head inside. Now, there was a few things that I wanted to find in here. The first being the champion's leathers. That awesome piece of armor that we were wearing all the way back on day one. I also wanted to find the Hylian shield as well as a bunch of other strong weapons, of course. King in the castle, king in the castle. I have a chair, I have a chair. Inside the main foyer where once lay a giant pit to go fight Ganon, Instead remain just the king's chair and a puzzle to solve. Upon lighting the torches in the castle, a secret chest is revealed behind the chair and inside it was the very first of our hunted items, the champion's leather. This garment worn by those in good standing with the Hyrule royalty. As the day progressed, we gathered powerful weapon after powerful weapon and found a piece of the royal guard armor. By the end of the day, we found ourselves at their docks and fighting a demon hand, but that despawned as we just kind of stayed far enough away from it. I'm so good. I don't know how people struggle with those creatures. I would never. Down in the docks, we lit yet another flame to reveal... Ooh, baby! We, of course, end our day in a shrine, one step closer to completing our goal. I continued shriding the following day, gathering Korok seeds as I went, and I was told by a comment that I might have missed something at Link's old house, so back I went to find a secret study down in a well. And well, 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 wouldn't you know it, it's our old hairband, so if we want to rock our hair how it was in Breath of the Wild, we can. Cool! I ended my day by dropping a shrine rock into a whirlpool, jumping into said whirlpool, almost drowning, and then completing the shrine. The next day I went looking for the light dragon, to no success, before eventually stumbling into a fight with one of those construct beings. Defeating it we found another champion's will which will allow us to upgrade the power of one of the champions but I hadn't decided who to upgrade yet. Later that day, I found another memory and Zelda explained to Raru how she saw Ganon back in her time and that she thinks that they will lose this fight. 
Ending off the day, we go to the Geoglyph, which looked like the Master Sword, and we're told of the journey the Master Sword took when it arrived in Zelda's hands in the past. Day 122 consisted of more visions that were kind of unimportant, to be completely honest, as well as partaking in some general shrine expeditions. But we did stumble upon the Lord of the Mountain, which was pretty neat, I guess. The following day, I found some tablets which alluded to using the Sage's ability to activate certain puzzles in this area. Problem is, I'm still missing a sage. Surely I'll get on that soon enough. Nope. I did what I could for now, and on day 124, I faced the most difficult challenge so far, the King Gleok. Yeah! Sniped! Y'all see that? What's up, King Gleok? Wait, King Gleok? It's all three types. I may be out of my depth here a little bit. If you thought the Ice Gleok from last video was scary, or the Thunder one from the beginning of this video, just wait. This thing has insane health and also has all three of the damage types, Fire, Ice, and Lightning. Good start, okay. Now I haven't merged every best thing I have together, so I'm just gonna have to go in with what I, the best I can. Oh, this should do a decent amount. Uh. Ah! Towards the end of the fight, he flies super high up into the air, and I have no choice but to use recall on the ice shards that he's lowering down to get myself up into the air and ready to attack it. Okay. Oh, big drop! Big drop! All massive damage! Oh, we got this! Spin to win! Come on! Let's go! With the first King Gleok defeated, I made my way back to the Great Plateau to complete the long quest the Poop Man had gave me. We drop his eyes into the holes and take them to place them underground. This quest sucked, as I found out the hard way after painstakingly dropping every eye into the hole, if you fast travel or move too far away, the eye respawns at the top. So I wasted a whole day dropping all these eyes into the ground, only to have to go and redrop them all again the following day. I did come across another Yiga hideout today, which after defeating the members inside, earned me the Yiga Mask. Dropping all those eyes in again and delivering them to a big poo statue underneath the main goddess statue on the surface earned me a heart piece. I mean, I guess I'll take it. At least it unlocked a couple more items for me to be able to purchase for pose, but was it worth taking up three full days? Uh, I don't know. Today I completed some shrines and took down two giant rock things before watching yet another memory. Finally we see Saria die and evil Zelda sort of explained. You can tell I'm super invested in this. The following day, I made my way to Eventide Island, expecting to lose my items. However, not this time. Instead, we are tasked with taking out all the monsters on the island to get a pirate ship to spawn in the cove. Shit, 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 Well, we defeated him. Good job, us. This wasn't the only challenge waiting for me here, as there was yet another one of Satan's booty holes to explore. Going into it led us into a gauntlet of battles. Okay. Looks like we're about to go into some type of uh, crazy battle. Oh, it's like a gauntlet. Okay. I wish the Goron bro actually did more than just swing him sword like... <sighs> nice shot! Like he's playing Wii Tennis. This better be a good reward. This better be a good reward. Actually kind of cool. Midness helmet? Okay. Heading out of the hole, taking on the monsters, and then the pirate ship, we gain access to a shrine and some decent weaponry overall. 
Today I made my way back to Tarrytown, a place I had so much fun in in the last 100 days. We hand in our first Sage's Will upgrade, deciding to go with Tullin for his range damage. We also upgraded our health some more and began building the monster display for Kilton. This took a while as I needed to go take pictures of multiple monsters, including Obsidian Flux. It is a big fatty. Come here, you big man. Oh yeah, him doing the big suck is a good is a good picture. The big thing he wanted me to take a picture of today was the King Gleo, which meant heading back to the island I fought it on previously. But doing this earns me the monster saddle for our horse and a diamond for money. Ending the day, I talk to the construction lady and she offers me the deal of a lifetime to build a house. Son and done. Hey, hello, you must be Link. These are the two rooms. The one on the left is a foyer and the one on the right is a bedroom. I better be able to freaking add more rooms on, have a freaking triple story double deluxe house. Indeed I can and indeed I do. Well, technically it's only a double story, but close enough. I mean, the kitchen should probably be downstairs, right? And the armor display, the sword display upstairs next to the bow display. And after a full day of creating my dream home, I got distracted by a dragon before I could properly show it off. Said dragon then led me to the horse fairy fountain, and after thinking about it, I wasn't finished with my house. So back I went to spend a whole nother day perfecting the house. Hello everybody, welcome to my epic house design. When you come in, you're greeted with a nice open floor plan living room here. We've got table chairs. You want to say hi to Riley Steed, you can. We've got Riley Steed here. She's a beauty. You come over here. You see my soon-to-be big Goron sword display. My double Hylian... My shield shield. The Hylian shield. We got the Wind Waker Boomerang, the Gloom Sword, and then over here, um, I don't know, I will find something to put here that's cool. But anyway, that's enough of the downstairs. Upstairs, we have something even cooler. And that is where the magic happens, the bedroom. This is where me and, Pur uh, me and Zelda get down to business. And then over here, this is where I pray to a statue for some reason and cook my meals. And then over here is, oh yeah, uh, we probably shouldn't be looking that at that, but you know, um, yeah, this is the best room in the house, let's be real. With my house finally built, I headed out after a quick tour and go to the ferry to upgrade my gear and witness another two memories. And that was all of them, or so I thought. After witnessing all the visions, I unlocked a secret final vision. restore the master sword for you. I will care for it until the time comes. I will pour my sacred power into it. It will be the weapon that defeats the Demon King. To become an immortal dragon is to lose oneself. She really became a dragon. I thought that was going to be Raru's sister that turned into a dragon, but you know what? I see it now. Dragon's tears. 
Tears of the Kingdom. Get it, guys? And what better way to show Zelda that we finally understand what she's been trying to tell us than by shooting her for a claw? <laughs> Yesterday was pretty full on, so I decided to chill out today with some chill shrine grinding. And in this shrine, I definitely cheated, deciding to use the recall ability to pull the ball to me instead of doing whatever water puzzle this shrine had installed for me. Is it really cheating if I'm just using the mechanics given to me? Yes, it is. Whatever, bro. I then took this man along the river on a boat to get his hoe back to find that crazy flower lady from the first game. I hope he wasn't talking about this lady that he was trying to find. We get some money from Solongate Bowser and end up running into a flame Gleok. Shame for him though, since I'd already managed to kill his king. By this point, this dragon was going down easy. Today I stumbled upon a quest to get a giant white stallion. That's what they call my pe- Dude, you can't say that. Okay, it's not true anyway. We find the horse, tame it, and head into a shrine that baffles me for ages. This shrine! What the heck is this shrine? This is so hard! Okay, we, we should probably make it straight. Uh, how do you do this? This puzzle's brutal! Right, right. Oh! Oh, oh. Okay, I'm no longer feeling good about this one. Yeah, this should work. Maybe. Okay, we're good. <laughs> I mean, when you think about it, I probably should have figured this out sooner. Fortunately though, time doesn't progress in the shrine, so even though I'm a dummy, we don't waste any in-game time. Let's go! We completed a shrine in the dark today and infiltrated a yet another Yiga hideout. You fat bitch. But didn't pick up the boots inside because I couldn't find them, so I'd end up coming back later. I made a short trip to Hyrule Castle and later found a Lionel to battle. These things are still no joke. Little did I know, I had an underground coliseum filled with them to battle in the future. For now though, I had my hands full. I was trying to mount. Oh, there we go. Ah! Get him, guys! Hit him! God damn it! Oh. Well, that was extremely scuffed, and we wasted all of our fairies that we collected, but I guess it's worth it, right? I ended my day heading towards Garuda Town, stopping off at a stable and completing a shrine along the way. In the morning, I left the stable and headed into the desert itself. I ended up in a quicksand pit, finding myself in the Kara Kara Bazaar, where I acquired a new headband to give me heat resist, and also to look pretty damn sexy. Arriving in actual Gerudo Town in the morning, I find it's been taken over by Gibdos, an enemy absent from Breath of the Wild, but found in a lot of other Zelda games. I really like its design in this game though. We find a staircase leading down underneath the town, but no way to get inside. So I look around and eventually find a way to drop down into the underground bunker, where we were about to get kicked out, but we're allowed to stay as we run into Bulliara, Princess Riju's bodyguard, who we knew from the previous game. She lets us know that Riju is off in the desert practicing her thunderclap, so we look around the bunker before finding a statue to turn in our many blessings. I found a secret exit which led me into a secret shop where I bought the rest of the sand set for full heat resist. The next day I found Riju training and damn. You missed. What's up? <laughs> it's it's me. Whoa, it's me. Damn. This changes things. I didn't expect to see you here. Okay. Okay. Hello, Riju. What the heck? Glow up. We train with her and learn to fire lightning. 
we head to the bazaar later and find it being taken over by Gibdos. But with Riju's help, we managed to take down a bunch of Gibdos with the power of lightning. Heading back to the town itself today, we prepared some defenses and sent troops to different sides of the town. We're preparing for a Gibdo invasion and Riju and I have some work to do. Thankfully, we were able to work together and wombo combo these Gibdo towers. There we go, there we go. Whoa! Why are they running like crazy men? <laughs> Huzzah! With the town now saved, I listen to some love seminar and find another underground cave to explore. Later in the day though, it was time to find the temple. And to do so, we needed to raise these towers and direct beams of light to form a triangle. Triangle. Triforce. Nope. This raises the temple and surprisingly, we encounter the boss right away. I do not like that. That is demonic. Ew, gross. What the actual heck? It must be responsible for all this. Come on. Let's take it What? Down okay. We're just going straight into it. All right. I'm, I'm here for it. Yo, that thing is creepy as hell. Get lightning strike though. Okay. Okay. We did damage. Is it gonna run off? Yep. I guess we still have to do the dungeon. Making our way inside with the goddess that is Riju, the temple's puzzles revolve around sending light beams around the temple, directing the lights to special pillars where we can then hit it with the thunderclap. This powers a lift to the top of the temple, and with that, we can take on Queen Gibdo again. You ain't running from me this time, baby. Queen Gibdo. Oh yeah, baby. We indeed will. Let me zap its ass. Za! Zap! Wait, it got all its health back. It healed up that pesky bugger. Oh, 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 now we spin on it. Spin, 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 spin. Hit the head, hit the head. Okay, the head does nothing. Okay. All good, we just deal as much damage as we can. Okay, we'll use the Horoblin Horrible Smasher to break that as well. Okay. Halfway, halfway. Bra, bra. Bra, 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 bra. Go on the light, I dare you. See what happens. Oh, sh she can't. The thunderclap. She's gone. Bra! Oh, mama. With it defeated, Riju gains her sacred stone and I get to touch her hand, which was really, really cool. Finally, a woman's touch. We gain access to her sage ability, which comes in quite handy later on. Four or five infinity stones claimed. Let's freaking go, guys. Heading back to Gerudo Town, we complete a couple of side quests in the town and find our way over to the Yiga Clan hideout. Find our three branches and collect the clan attire. Earn your place among us and the door will open to you. Maybe then we'll teach you our moves. Now go away. Okay, let's see if we have all the clan attire. Okay, we don't have the Yiga pants. We need the Yiga pants. Well, I didn't go up there last time, so I'm going to assume the pants are up here. Aha! Pants! Mm, all right, come in. Open up. Infiltrating the Jaeger clan. The brand new gear. I'd heard talk of potential new member. I take it that's you. I can hardly believe how quick you managed to visit all three branches. Impressive, to say the least. Making it inside the hideout disguised as a Jaeger assassin, I was somehow scammed by two separate members for a spike and a vehicle which I thought was going to be a schematic, but was actually just the vehicle itself. Wait, why did he... Did I really pay $100 to just be sent out of the... Out. Okay, well that's pointless. Fortunately though, my time spent in here was still worth it. After completing a combat trial, we gain access to the hidden earthquake technique, which means anytime we don't have a weapon equipped and charge attack, we use the Yiga technique to cause an earth spike to attack the enemy. We began the next day completing a shrine and jumping down into the pit Koga fell into back in Breath of the Wild. We search around here for a day conquering an underground Yiga base. Hey man, what's up? I'm a new Yiga member. Are you having fun on this boat? Um... Sneak attack! Brah! Never saw it coming. What an idiot. 
and by the end of the day I was back on the surface and heading towards a battle platform in the sky. I had no clue what awaited me here, but turns out it was just yet another King Gliok. Oh! Yeah, you're not getting away this time, idiot! Let's go! Chesticle, chesticle, what is in the chesticle today? In the chesticle is the sage's will. Called it! Let's go. By the following morning though, I had bested it and claimed yet another sage's will, which was enough to upgrade another sage's power. Following on from this, I was told about the gliding suit, which would increase our airborne movement speed, which I thought was super cool, and turns out all I had to do was beat those dive trials again and talk to the steward construct. So after crushing the record at every single dive spot, your boy's kind of a professional diver at this point, I walked away at the end of the day with the full glide suit. The following two days I spent all my time in shrines going from one to the next crushing them out before hating in a bunch of blessings and upgrading Riju's sage power while increasing our hearts even more. And what better way to end our day than by cooking up a storm, baby. This the land Where's the land That's source? The land the following morning I found some more Korok proof and was told about a secret Colosseum underneath the Colosseum on the land. So off I went to find it. And look what we have to fight. Oh, oh, a Lionel? Oh my lord, wait, what? Okay, okay, this is happening, hang on. Let me, <laughs> what the hell? Yeah, chill, daddy. Daddy, chill. What the hell is even that? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, okay. Good stuff, good stuff. Yeah, back up, back up, idiot. Okay, 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 chill, chill. Okay, well, at least we get parts for it, right? Oh, no, now we gotta go to a blue Lionel! What the heck? Oh, we're fucked. <laughs> Defeat the last Lionel and fuse the silver Lionel home with your Master Sword. Alright, done. Deal. Got it. Will do. Wait, is this the final one? Or is there one after this as well? Oh, my lord. Oh, my lord. I'm stressing. Uh. Oh! Yeah, idiot, dummy, dummy idiot. Okay, Octorok eyeball, go! Oh, big, 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 massive. Let's go, big dodge, big dodge, big dodge. Come on, guys, hit him! How about no? Ah! Okay, we eat. Time to eat. Things are progressing as I intended them to. I don't know what you got, you guys are worrying about. This was all intended gameplay. Okay, oh, we got the fire rush. We got the fire. How are you even getting here? Lionel's are easy. Shut up, man! I, I got him. I got him. It's the weapon. It's the weapon. I, I okay. Wait, there's two more left. Are you joking? Okay. Oh my lord. Oh my lord. How's this dude not dead yet? Oh, far out! Wait, there's another one! Why is there more? Silver Lionel Saberhorn. Holy shit. Okay, that looks really good, actually. Why is he covered in armor? Oh my lord! We have no way to get our gloom health back. We just have to... We have to do this perfectly, effectively. Okay. Ooh, hang on. Your boys just had an idea. Aha! All right, let's try that again. So close! I guess I could launch an ancient ar ancient arrow at it. <laughs> what? So, unlike Ancient Arrows in the first game, these arrows actually one-shot anything they hit, but as a penalty, you don't get the loot from the mob you kill. I sort of felt a little cheap doing it this way, and I had no idea that this was an actual feature of that arrow, so I decided to go back and do this legit. Well, I had a semi-legit plan to defeat the Lionel, including creating a demon mech monster with cannons and lasers to hopefully take him out that way, but uh, you'll see how that goes. I know how this looks, right? It doesn't look great, but I'm sure it'll work. Okay? Oh yeah, look at this thing! Okay, it works, kind of. Oh yeah. 
Oh yeah, this will this will do the job, right? Right, guys? Look at him. He's a marvel. He's a marvel. This this guy is. Whatever I'm missing, he's coming. He's coming. He's coming. He's coming. Shit! Just build it. Just build it. Just build it. Just build it. He just destroyed it all in an instant. Okay. Well, I would say that is a that was um, a very good plan. Time for plan B, I'd say, and that involves fusing a rocket to my shield, flying into the air, entering bullet time, and then spamming bombs at him. Oh, oh, this is the first time we're taking on this Lionel. I'm sure this is gonna go just as I planned it to. Uh, spin to win, spin to win. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, we land the flurry rush. There we go, first time we're actually landing the flurry rush. We got the master sword out. Come on, let's go. Oh yes! Okay, we dodge, we dodge, we dodge, we dodge. First go, baby! Let's go! This game is easy! Oh my lord, there I am in the background. Don't I look so cute over there? And as a reward, we get given Majora's Mask. A pretty cool item to get. Ending the day, we head over to the Typho Ruins and use all our Sage abilities to complete these dragon puzzles, which unlocks an underground bunker. Inside the bunker, though, we find this. Is that the Twilight Princess sword that uh, Zelda uses in Twilight Princess? Uh, apparently it isn't, but I wouldn't know because I haven't played Twilight Princess. For the rest of the day, I went around the map trying to find Zelda dragons so I could shoot her to get the scales to upgrade my champion's tunic. Finally finding her by the end of the day, I find that she actually has shards on her back as well that when fused to a weapon provides healing on hit. Well, let's go to another shrine. What the heck? Why am I naked? What do you mean I need to beat the constructs to get my clothes back? All right, fine. Epic, easy. Today I headed over to the stables in the south to feed these little dino things, giving them some luminous stones to chomp on. The cool thing is after a little bit of time and after the stone passes through the internals of the creature, we get to pick up its poop. And it just so happens that this thing poops out all kinds of gems, from zonite all the way to diamonds. There is way too many references to poop in this game. I mean, the Koroks, those statues, and now these things? It's a little bit sus. While waiting for said gem poop, though, we explore the underground some more. Stumbling into some weird low roof cave, we get ourselves into another round robin battle showdown, this time with Heroblins. Although this was nothing compared to the Lionel, so we crushed them and claimed Sheik's Mask from Ocarina of Time. But our battles didn't end here. Instead, we found ourselves in a battle with another Phantom Ganon. No! We're not ready for this! Oh. Oh, easy. Easy with the Master Sword. Defeating him earned us another of his gloom weapons and a piece of the wild set armor. I gotta be honest, I don't really like this set at all, and although I may collect it, I have no interest in wearing it. I went back to claim my poop stones today, and then went back down into the depths to explore even more and getting enough crystallized charges to upgrade our battery substantially. The next day I shot Zelda in the mouth, yeah, that doesn't sound right, but at least she gave me a piece of the Light Dragon's Fang, and we took pictures of the Sky Monuments before equipping the best paraglider skin a man could dream for. Well, unless there's a Pura skin I'm missing. I ended the day by upgrading my Fierce Deity Boots to Max at the Fairy Fountain and figuring out how much more items we actually needed to finish off all the sets that I liked. The following day, I explored the depths some more before stumbling upon yet another King Gleok. How many kings are there? Isn't the point of a King Gleok supposed to be that there's only one king? Whatever. By this point though, I've become quite the Gleok killer, so we slay it and claim the Cap of Twilight, completing my Twilight Princess set. One of only two Zelda games I have somehow not played. I know, somehow I've played all the GBA games and DS games, and yet somehow I'm missing Twilight Princess? Let me know in the comments if you'd like to see me 100% Twilight Princess. Today I started by completing yet another shrine. Oh, not again. Oh my god, I just got this new set to rock and I'm naked. With another blessing acquired and my gear returned to my body, I went to find Hinoxes to murder for their organs, which can be somehow used to upgrade my gear. That following morning though, something I thought was pretty cool happened. Wait, what the heck? Another star drop? 
Two star fragments on the one night? That's busted nutty crazy. What the heck? I completed yet another shrine and glided over to find Zelda Dragon to shoot her in the horn this time. We just need one more horn from her and we could fully upgrade their champion's leather. I ended my day shooting another dragon in the mouth and fighting the marbled goma from the fire temple again. How is it down here and alive? I don't know. With my gobro though, we launched the Goron Glicky at his leg and spin on him, taking him out. Today I visited the Poop Man to reclaim my broken big Goron Sword and Fierce DD Blade so that I could display them in my house. Look at this display, isn't it beautiful? I reckon today we finally go to Hyrule Castle and take on the Demon King. Well that at least is my plan, but you know, things change. But anyway, let's figure out where we were. Oh, yeah, you guys weren't supposed to see this. That's awkward. Anyway, to probably nobody's surprise, I did not end up fighting Ganon today. Instead, today I found myself fighting yet another King Gliok and getting another Sage's Will. The following day, I went to hand in all my bubble gems to Bill Colton to try and finish the Mystic set. We had enough to get the pants, but needed another 14 more to get the mask. So I decided to go on a bubble hunting spree. This bubble adventure consumed 10 full days of my time, although I did do other things as well. As I went into the desert to find more gems, I ended up starting a quest to become a Yiga Blade Master. It involved me dropping bananas off at frog statues, but while doing so, I did manage to take a Korok up a waterfall on my multi-terrain vehicle. This is all working out quite well, we're knocking out like 60 stones with one bird, as the old saying goes as well as delivering a shrine crystal at the same time. Talk about multitasking on the multi-terrain vehicle, am I right? As I dropped off another banana at a frog statue, I found yet another gem at the top of a mine. Finally, you have returned after making the necessary offerings. My intelligence sources have confirmed it. You passed the Blade Master exam. Let's go! I didn't even have to use any blades to get that, but anyway. You're permitted to step into the inner sanctum. The Inner Sanctum was a bit of a letdown though, since I just got some Yiga weapons and access to the shrine. Let's just go for your deity mode. Oh, they found me instantly. Prepare for battle? Oh, we do just get kicked out. That's lame. Yiga clan enforcers! But will they let me back in? These guys have really bad defenses. <laughs> Continuing my hunt for more gems, I arrived in the actual desert today. We fell inside a sand trap though, but did get rewarded as we found the phantom armor set piece and we also shot a bubble frog for yet another bubble gem. We then competed in a race where the reward was a Gerudo sailcloth. But nothing will be good enough to replace my Hudson cloth. That evening I climbed the desert temple to find nothing and the next day spent the whole day mining in this cave. I mean, look at this. And what did we get for it? Actually, something kind of cool. Wait, what? Vanda Boris's divine helm? Not only does it provide us with electric resist, but it also has a secondary effect. As you can now see, Riju wears her sage helmet. Shame it doesn't actually upgrade her power or do anything, but it looks cool. Today I went bare naked in the Gerudo town and got thrown in jail. I then attempted to woo a woman in the Vo and Me quest before getting rejected multiple times. Uh. Oh. We just had the drink. Oh, we just... Okay, well evidently this is what I was going to say but the game just explained it for you. You just get him drunk. <laughs> Nintendo, do better. This lady wanted some flowers from Kakariko, so off I went. Where's the child? Open at daybreak, my up. Oh, time to visit mother. Is mother dead? Oh, that's sad. Okay, get to work, child. I will murder your father and your sister unless you move to the goddamn wreath stand right now. Move. You won't have just your mother to worry about in a minute. It's a demon! It's a ghost! She's immune to swords! What is this? Oh, you wanna fight? You wanna fight? Shit? You shit? You wanna fight? Yeah! 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 That scared him! That scared him! Go! Go sell! Good! Just what I needed. Good. He did all of that and got... 
Nothing. Nothing. Zero. Nada. Squat. To end off my day, I went looking for the final three bubble gems we needed for the mask. I found one and completed a shrine before the day came to a close. The following day, I found the final two bubble gems I needed and handed them into Colton and got the final piece. Let's test it out. And this is to go, to go even, even further, further beyond! beyond. Ah! 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 Dragon Fist! Ha! But what's cool about the armor is it actually has rupee padding, which means instead of taking damage, we actually just lose rupees instead. But I don't know if that's actually worth it. Let's find out. 60? Are you kidding? 60 rupees? That's ridiculous. Screw that. You lost me. With that complete, surely I went to take on the Demon King today. Nope. Actually, I went to Tingle Island and traversed the depths below them, which earned me the cap of the wind. So, overall, not worth it. Ending the day though, I did get some more Zono parts for building. And in the morning of day 180, I crushed two more shrines, handed in my eight blessings for two heart containers, and prepared for our adventure in the castle. This was going to be epic. So, heading up to the castle, I run into evil Zelda, who disappears and we get swarmed with monsters. We follow her around the castle, taking on wave after wave of monster forces, and by the end of the day, I finally find her in the center of the castle. Some creepy stuff happens, and it's revealed that it's just a puppet of Ganondorf. What a surprise. Yeah, I'm sure nobody saw that coming. And if you thought one Phantom Ganon was bad, how about five? Well, actually, it's not so bad. We managed to take them down with relative ease, and the champions arrive to help me fight. Ganondorf runs away with a little boko tail between his legs, and it's hinted that we may be able to find a fifth sage? Huh? This is confirmed by Pura the next day, and so we begin our hunt for them. I started my search back in Kakariko Village, as I thought maybe it had something to do with the monument that I wasn't allowed to access before. However, I got slightly put off the trail by this guy, who ended up wasting a bunch of my time as I went looking for a bunch of those ancient text pillars in the sky. After a day of hunting for them and assuming this is what I was supposed to do, I hand in all my pictures and get a bunch of rupees. And also a glider skin. Yay. Speaking to Pai though, we convince her to let us explore the ringed ruins, and inside we find a hint as to the location of the fifth sage. Heading to Dracozo Lake, we have to solve a riddle to find this tribal electric garb, which when wearing and presenting a Zonai charge to this table, clears the sky and reveals a hidden sky island. Arriving on the island, we traverse the many gaps and defeat the many enemies awaiting for us. Arriving at the peak towards the end of the day, we reach a door which needs a certain amount of hearts to open. Hopefully I have enough. You don't even need barely any hearts. Correct past me, you don't. Inside we find a mask which directs us to the underground, and flying said mask to the ground, we find an underground elevator. The voice inside the mask is directing us to find them as quick as possible so we can talk, but we're already talking, why don't we just talk now? Wait, now they want us to build a robot mech for them? Mmm, a little sus. So I brought part after part to them, solving a bunch of puzzles as it's revealed this is a fifth hidden dungeon. On day 187, we fully repaired the mech, and we were given yet another task. We must recover my secret stone. Okay, lady. Whatever you say. The trail to the secret stone was long and arduous, but we had many ways to enhance our mech. It was a long walk as we took down countless enemies and used plenty of Zonai devices to help us traverse, like this rocket we used on our backpack to fly into this temple as day 189 began. Inside the temple we found the sacred stone finally, but before we could grab it we were interrupted by an old mech that had been taken over by Ganondorf. A little throwback to the Divine Beast Blights in a way, I think. To my disappointment though, it was pretty much just another mech battle like the Koga fight, where we had to knock it into the fence. Defeating the construct, we find out it was Minoru, the sage's spirit, who had sacrificed her body and became a spirit to help us on our journey. She was going to awaken earlier and help us at the start of the game, but sadly Ganondorf prevented that. Fortunately though, with her saved and her sacred stone acquired, we get given... The final infinity stone! Let's freaking go! 
With the fifth Sage on site and the final dungeon of the game finished, we can tick that off our objective list. To end my day off though, I defeated another marbled Gomba in the underground and made my way back to the surface. I had however not completed my second goal of upgrading the Fierce Deity set all the way to max and so the grind continued. I completed another shrine today and if I completed a few more, I would have enough to upgrade my hearts one final time. So after exploring the Skyforge, the following day I headed to another the shrine and on day 192 I found the final shrine of the game claiming my final blessing I found myself back in the depths today and fighting the Lynels in the Colosseum yet again. Not only did I come here for good weapons for crafting, but I also needed Lynel Guts to finish upgrading the Fierce Deity set. And after slaying a bunch more I took my guts and ran over to the fairy. I've been murdered. The fairy murdered me. And there it is, fully upgraded Fierce Deity Mask. Now you're probably thinking it was time to head to the castle, and you'd be right, but also wrong, as I went well diving today and found a couple more Korok seeds for one final upgrade. The next morning I made my final preparations, made some food, fused some weapons, and had 24 hours of sleep. Kinda makes sense he slept for so long since he pretty much hasn't slept since he woke up almost 200 days ago. I donned my favourite sets today all mixed together as I headed up to Hyrule Castle, and from the peak I jumped into the depths. As I made my way through the depths, I encountered a plethora of enemies ranging from Lizalfos to Lyklax to Lynels, and defeating all of them I continued my descent. I came across another Phantom Ganon which I swiftly defeated. Oh, we land the Flurry Rush, where's our Flurry Rush increased damage weapon? Should I be using it now? Probably not, but let's just see how much damage it does. Insane? Okay. Oh, yo! This is where we were. At the very start. Oh, yo. That's the torch we dropped at the start. Oh, yo, hang on a minute. Let's go. And with the help of the sages, it was time to take on Ganondorf's forces. Let's go! The Demon King's army. Okay, we are not wasting the Master Sword this early. There's so many enemies! Yeah, you on fire now. Now what? Idiot. Oh, now we're going into Lazalfos. Okay, I can see what's happening here. We're gonna go through waves. I'm down for it, though. Alright, we're getting on the back, baby. Cannon! Go! Water attack! Go! Go, you know, bro! Perfect. We launched him away and then we... That gloom, it means but one thing, the Demon King is there, huh? Whoa! It's all the old bosses! But I guess we can't. And with them locked out, we had no choice but to press on by ourselves. Here we go. This world should be shrouded in darkness, not bathed in insufferable light. A king's revival. 
and the birth of his new world. Mm -hmm. Let's go. Oh my god, we're doing the same damage. But we land the flurry rush. Okay. Yeah, you idiot. There we go! He flurry rushed me! What the hell? It's okay, it's okay, he's weak, he's weak. Yeah, no, no! <laughs> I am not even near the limits of my power. Alright, bro. Oh! Okay. Oh, yo, he's got all these puppets! Wait, Tullin's here! Wait, Tullin's- Oh, they're all here! Don't have your proper sword yet. Where's gear him? Oh, let's go. Then. They're all knocked out. Let's go! Get parry! Does the backflip? Comes in parry! Let's go! Is that it? From Breath of the Wild, the Ganon circling the castle in Breath of the Wild. What? That's a sick throwback. The Demon Dragon. <laughs> We're in the mouth. <laughs> Comes! Let's go! Yo!
Let's go! What the? We now had but one goal, and that was to destroy the Demon Dragon. And to do that, we needed to take out the four weak points on its back. So as Zelda flew me high into the sky, I could jump from weak point to weak point, slowly taking him down. I think we're nearly done. But there's got to be one more place we haven't hit. And it's on the head, I see it. I see it. Zelda, come get me! Zelda, get me! Okay, good. The Blood Moon! I'm coming for that head, baby! Ooh, the Dodgers! And with two final swings of the Master Sword, we break the casing and are able to climb on top of the stone and land the final Finishing blow. And with that, we've accomplished every single goal I set out to achieve on my 100 days. And in a twist of fate, Zelda is miraculously turned back into a human, and it's this time that we finally catch her. But we ain't done, baby. Here's to another 100 days. So, in the first 200 days, I accomplished so much. I beat every dungeon, fully upgraded a bunch of armor sets, even completed over 120 shrines. Oh, and how could I forget, destroy the Demon King and save Zelda. Pretty big deal. But what I didn't manage to do was find every Korok. Wait, what? No, no. That would be insane. So for the next 100 days, I have a few goals I have in mind that I want to complete. First, beat every shrine in the game. I wonder if we'll get something good for doing that. Second, fully map out the depths. Third, Thirdly, complete every single side quest. Fourth, get every single piece of armor available. Fifth, complete the compendium. And finally, collect every single Korok seed. So day 200 begins exactly where we left off, holding dear the greatest treasure I'd found so far. <laughs> 
Uh, anyway. But to get my bearings, I need to figure out what shrines I was missing and what quests I had yet to do. So the first thing I did was consult the wiki. Yeah, a little bit lame, but by the end of the day, I had my list. Firstly, there are 60 side adventures in the game, of which I've completed 42, which is a surprisingly large amount. These are generally longer side quests with more of an impact. On top of that though is 139 regular side quests, of which I have only done 27, meaning I had 130 side missions total still to complete. Of the 136 armor pieces, I have 68 somehow, having exactly half, but I'm not sure if we can get all of it without having the amiibos. I guess we'll find out. And out of the 152 shrines in the game, I've completed 124, but we are missing so much down in the depths, so we've still got our work cut out for us. Oh, and don't even get me started on the Koroks. On the first real proper day, I decided the best way to go about all of this was to clear up as many shrines as I could first, because then I could fast travel wherever I needed to go for quests. And so began the great shrine hunt of 2023, starting of course in Korok Forest, where I aimed to finally figure out how to get to these shrines. None shall pass. Oh, is that a, is that a reference? None shall pass. Wait, is this a talus? I can't grab it, so I bet it is. Are we really having to hit this as the weak point? We are. This is kind of cool. With our, all, all our endgame weapons, um, this is pretty easy. <laughs> Wow, look at that fat stone, it grew. Pampanke Shrine. Probably a free shrine, I'd guess. And with this, we have completed every single shrine in the Lost Forest in a single day. So I would say uh, that's good progress. The next morning, I traversed the land in search of more shrines. Along the way, I found Koroks and explored a few wells. All of these shrines so far had no real puzzle inside, but the final one today stripped me down nude and upon defeating all the enemies inside, we gained our clothes back. Phew, for a second there, I thought I got the privilege of running around Hyrule naked. I guess not. The following day, however, was a little different. I found myself completing two different side quests, one of which had me find some hidden Goron treasure between two lizards. Oh, Varudania's Divine Helm, huh. And the second was when we ran into this band of adventurers where we slaughtered a bunch of monsters. I gladly joined them in their monster slaying journey and the leader gave me 100 rupees for my troubles and said we could find him in Akala, so maybe we'll meet up with them later. The following day, I kept exploring Elden Volcano and found yet another shrine crystal. Problem was, I needed to get it across this lava. <laughs> what have I done? I'm a fool. Am I dumb? Don't answer that. Intended. Intended. <laughs> I then killed an igneo talist and was asked to bring this gore on some rock meat, so off I went to do so. What if I bring a shit ton of it? I'm coming with the Arby's meat mountain. Yeah, look what I freaking brought. I literally just brought you rock roast. What are you talking about? Look, you don't want it. I'm trying to give it to you, idiot. Bro, I brought a bunch and now it's despawned. What the frick? Are you fing kidding me? At least I can tick another side quest off the list. Mark my words, Goron. You will fear the day that Link returns. Today I took a picture of the sun in a cave and showed some old people who liked it enough to give me 100 rupees. Weird. But this little Goron also had a quest to head down to the southern mine, and once we were down there, we found an archery minigame. I, of course, crushed multiple rounds, which led me to the peak of Death Mountain for the ultimate challenge, which when completed, earned me a Goron Glider skin. Ending off my day though, I tried to do something I probably shouldn't have. Uh, should we go harass Zelda? You know what? What better way to end off a day than by harassing Zelda? Am I right, guys? How much do you reckon these Zelda feet pics would go for? Should I take a picture? On day 206, I bathed in the beautiful hot springs. Two bros sit in a hot spring, five feet apart because they're not gay. Later on, I headed over towards the Zora area and enter Raleigh's channel. We take a shrine crystal on a boat to the end of the channel and get yet another blessing. Later, I found a guy trapped in a cage. Yeah, guys, get him. Hey, there's a guy captured in there. I don't care about the blood moon, but I will take your money. Thank you very much. And in this cave, we found yet another shrine. To end off our day, we head over to Turnpoint Cave, taking us to the final shrine of the day and knocking out yet another quest to deliver this man to a Zora child. I don't know why this man is looking for a Zora child, and you know what? It's probably best I don't ask. The following day, we pick up some quests to deliver some stones to this guy and get the Zora Glider skin as a reward. We then jump into the whirlpool, finding a secret hole to take us deeper down. Oh, 
We should put on our Zora tunic. Can we get Zora pants? I feel like you should be able to get Zora pants. What is this? Oh, what the heck? I swear I had no idea. I literally just said, I wonder if you can get Zora pants. And then they show up. What? That is just completely random. The next day, I spent ages looking for where Wifey wafted away to, and eventually, I found her all the way up at the water temple. How did she even get up here? I thought Sidon and me were the only ones capable of making it up that far. Whatever. The next morning, I found a Zora spear, handed it to this dude, and he upgraded it to a light scale trident. May your fishiness rest in fish, I guess? I don't know. As I was leaving Zora's domain, though, I jumped through a waterfall and found a hidden cave behind it. And then inside that, was another waterfall and jumping through that waterfall gives me Varuta's divine helm. Let's go. Also inside this cave was a way into the depths. And so I dove, finding myself at a lake I had not seen since like day 50 or something. We turned in some Zonai and went exploring the depths. Over the next few days, I decided I would try and map out the entirety of the bottom portion of the depths. And after touching a few light routes, on day 211, I found Kolgera again. Probably my favorite temple boss. Kolgera? Where? Wait, I see it. It's like very hard to see, but it's here. <gasps> this is sick. Let's go! And there's a dragon in the background! What? If we do this right, we can pull out Bomb Arrow. Destroy that. And can we do it again? Oh, oh yeah, we can. Look, it's right here. Speed run strats! Let's go! Come here, Colgera. Yeah! Let's go! Can't believe we found Colgera down here and we took it out in the dark. I kept touching light route after light route until finally on day 215, I was happy with my progress, filling in most of the southern depths. On day 216, I exited the depths and went looking for more shrines. So far, all the shrines I've encountered are pretty much puzzles to get into the shrine and not actually any puzzles in the shrine. So I kind of want to do a shrine where there's a puzzle in the shrine. But as you see, we keep finding ones with free chests in them. The following morning, I flew another shrine stone over to its shrine place, and wouldn't you know it, yet another free shrine. How am I supposed to rate a shrine on the epic shrine rating scale if they keep giving me free blessings? I found a shrine quest today called Born of Water, and I tried freezing it by splashing it with water, but eventually I figured out if you just combine my two ideas that I was having and slot the ice into the gaps here, it would in fact birth a shrine from the ground. Interesting. But yet again, there was no puzzle to solve inside as the puzzle was on the outside. Later in the day though, I found my way into a cave and found a book suggesting to throw a zoanite spear through this hole. Hey, we did it. Oh brother, yet another one of these shrines, are you kidding me? Continuing my shrine hunting journey, I found myself in the Gerudo Desert. And getting to the next shrine was a puzzle in itself. Crawling through this underground tunnel, flipping switches until we bust into the shrine room and get disappointed by the lack of puzzle. The next day I found myself back in the depths and down here I found a new skimmer stone and the miner's helmet completing the set and ticking off one more piece of the giant armor collection puzzle. It was a short adventure down here though, as I made it into the next village. There are a plethora of quests to complete in this town, first of which was the puzzle where I had to take pictures of these murals, and completing it we unlock a second portion, where we had to find some balls and place them in these statues. There are seven orbs to place in these statues, and some of these balls are as far away as Karakara Bazaar. How bizarre, how bizarre. How bizarre. And also have quests attached to them. So this is a really long quest. At the bazaar, I found some boy who said their mate fell into a sandpit. I don't know why that has to be my problem, but I rescued him and earned myself another orb. Taking it back though was quite annoying. And to get the next orb, a child attempted to blackmail me. Great. You gotta play with, I mean, challenge me for it. Beat me and it's yours. Okay, what's the challenge? Here's the game. I'm gonna hide a stuffed sealed doll somewhere here. If you find it before time rounds out, you win. Okay. Did this stuff belong to the soldiers? Gotta brace myself and push. Okay, so someone Near where the soldiers were. The soldiers were in here, weren't they? Well, that was easy. 
<laughs> Let's not play together again, because now you're forcing me to walk all the way back up here and then bring it all the way back down. I ended up dispatching of the child swiftly and taking the orb anyway. And by the end of day 223, I had ended in all the orbs and we find a secret tunnel and find a gigantic eighth orb. I painstakingly delivered this to the Gerudo ruins and find a huge underground tunnel. Following through the cave, by the morning we had found a hidden shrine to the eighth hero of the Gerudo town. Long story short, we got a bunch of loot. Okay, $300 and a bunch of good stuff. The next day, I attempted to rescue the jewelry lady from a Molduga deep in the desert. Molduga! Oh, and it's got the banging theme as well. Okay, don't worry, lady. I'm here to save you. How am I supposed to stop it? I don't get this. Shit! What are you supposed to do here? Uh, I have no clue what just happened, but you know what? I'll take it. <laughs> ah! Why are we taking so much damage from this thing? One more Gibdo bone should take it out. Oh. Nice. I saved you. Heading back to town, we say what's up, and she offers to make me the dead Gerudo champion's weapon. Pretty cool. I'll take it. I picked up all the jewelry from my armor collection in the morning and delivered this lady to some statues in the desert. Bursa! Bursa! I gotta pay 50 rupees to cart you around, lady. This better be worth it. All right, let's go. This is where you wanted to go, lady. I've brought you. So basically, I really only got 50 rupees because... I had to pay 50 rupees. You stupid, I hate you. Don't walk towards the Lizalfos. The next day, I made my way into the sky and found another bear shrine. This led me to a construct who was holding the shrine stone and defeating the construct and taking the shrine stone back to the shrine, of course, left me disappointed. But if you want to make me the opposite of disappointed, it would mean the world if you subscribe to the channel. If you're enjoying the video and you've made it this far, you might as well. Do it if you like Pura as much as I do. From here, I found my at a slightly larger sky island with a more significant puzzle to solve. We drained the water and it's gonna kill a bunch of fish. Let's go. And we had to direct some light beams through the inside of the island, eventually opening a door which led to another shrine. Now I want you to guess, did this shrine have a puzzle? Yes or no? What a surprise. Today I collected two more sages well in the sky and headed down to the depths to knock out some more light roots. Three days later. Ah, day 233. I wonder what I'll get up to today. I started by heading back to the desert to take on some miscellaneous tasks. I ended up in a battle with another Molduga, and just like that cutscene with Maru, who beams the shit out of the Dugas, I bomb the shit out of it and we say goodbye to Mr. Duga. I took a picture of this sand pit and showed this little Korok who was adorably happy about it. Aww. On day 235, I found a shrine in the sky and to get into the shrine, I needed to yet again take another crystal to it. And will you look at that, I am once more disappointed. At the end of the day though, I did find another sage as well. And off in the distance, I could see a faint glow emanating from the roof of the Temple of Time. So off I went to investigate. I have been waiting. Okay, Legend of the Great Sky Island. Light the three fires, then return here before the next time bell rings in 12 hours from now, okay? But you must not set foot on any surface other than the roof of this temple during the ceremony. I lit all of the fires I was asked to and was rewarded with a glider fabric. Eh, cool enough, I guess. Ending off the day, I found another Sage's Will and so began the Great Sage's Will Hunt. Ba -ba -da -da -da. Ha one more Sage's Will to go. Along the way, I killed some Gliox, and that was enough to fully upgrade my glide suit to the max. And at the end of the day, I grabbed my final Sage's Will. What's up, big man? Think I saved your town on like day 60 or something and I'm finally back to finish the job. I need to help you actually rebuild it. There are five buildings that need fixing. Oh man. The lucky treasure shop, that could be fun. The first priority is to make sure there's gambling in this town. Boom. Ho. Don't call me that. Wait, that's it? That's all we had to do? Crack open one. All right, let's do it. This one. I hate gambling. Excuse me? I bloody rebuilt your shop. You should go F yourself, man. 
Vault fruit. So worth it. All this time and effort I'm putting into this. For a vault fruit and a like like. And with every house repaired in the village, and with the villagers all super happy, we get to see them hit the gritty. What? Right foot creep, ooh, walking with that ear. Talking to one of the villagers in the morning, he informed me that he lost his trading boat. So I headed out to try and find him a new one. But before I could make it, I found this. That looks like Ganon's horse. I think I could land on it potentially. No, I I can't. Oh my god, that took up so much stamina. This is definitely Ganon's horse, right? I mean, I should definitely take this to the stable, right? It took me the rest of the day to take it to the stable, but I think I came up with a pretty cool name for it. What do you guys think? So all the way over on that island apparently is where we will find this man's boat, I guess. I guess we can build the ultimate boat and sail it all the way back. Yeah! <laughs> Boat car! Why go on the water when you can go on land? You found a boat for me! Indeed I did. On day 242, I ran into So Longe Bowser, the bird. So Longe Bowser. So Longe Bowser. Well, I think his name's something else, but anyway. We have to complete his mission at every single stable, and this was going to take a long time. Also, at each stable, we need to complete a picture quest. For example, this time I went hunting for goats. I took a picture for the stable near Gerudo Town and completed Saw Longe Bowser's quest in the well. For the next few days, I went around doing all of these quests, and after a few days of doing this, I went on a quick side adventure to find the final piece of the Ocarina of Time set. I found Colgera down here again, which was quite random but right next to that was the headpiece. I upgraded this set to the max and if I do say so myself I look pretty damn dapper. Taking these pictures was relatively fun I guess and all the pen side quests were somewhat intriguing like the one with the lady singing in the well or the time we had to go worship the chicken cuckoo god or when we were lured to the great pelotor and ambushed by Yiga members. You know all the good stuff. Yes I'm naked. Like everyone else, this lady must feel very uncomfortable or very happy. You're telling me people are going up here, talking to a cuckoo, the all clucking cuckoo. Okay, my true love. What the heck? Go to the top of the stable's head within the time limit. Wait, what? Why am I listening to a freaking chicken? I made it. Now what? The second trial is bring three logs here within the time limit. Oh, that's it? <laughs> yes, I have done it. Cluck cluck, so you tied or yet or what? It's a Yiga member! Guys, watch out, I'll deal with the Yiga members. <laughs> Got him. I could have guessed they were Yiga members. Something felt sus from the start. On day 250, I yet again got distracted after a few days deciding to work on my house. I wanted to add just one more room to display my weapons, but instead ended up completely redesigning the whole house. And at the end of day 152, I went off to a lake and found a goddess statue. Here I threw in Dinral's festy toe fungus and she gave me a ruby somehow. I don't know how, but cool, I guess. How do I take a picture of this from the sky? Yeah, I have a picture for you. Yo, look at this. Look at this photograph. What are you doing? <laughs> no! Alright, we gotta bring all the toys back up. Are you serious? Why do I have to pay you $20 to attempt to do this quickly? There you go. All 10, baby! You have all your plushies back! My plushie. Isn't he the cutest? Yeah, you are the cutest plushie, aren't you? $100 for that? Princess Zelda kidnapped? Uh-huh. Wait, Zelda? What are you doing here? Well, oh, I knew I'd lure in some heroic wannabes if we use Zelda as bait. <laughs> Oh, don't mind me, Pen. I've just been fighting by myself. And by day 261, I had completed every single stable quest. And with that done, we could go to the newspaper place and claim my armor set. Yay, the froggy hood. I'm a frog. Now on my list of side adventures, I had but three missing, of which was a gigantic task to complete the compendium, and the other two were to bring peace to two different regions. So I headed over to Hyrule Field to rush this monster camp with the boys. And as the night fell, me and the boys destroyed yet another monster camp. Now for the compendium. How much does a picture from the compendium cost? Elite enemy picture is 500. So I guess elite enemies, I should take a picture of my 
myself. Let me run the math real quick. So it's 447 pictures missing. If each one is 100, that's 44,700 rupees. That's a lot of fucking rupees. So off I went to take pictures of all the high level creatures in the world. Along the way, I bought some clothes from Kakariko, role playing as Sheik from Super Smash Bros. Yes, that's where she's from. I don't care if she's in Ocarina of Time. Wait, she's in Ocarina of Time? What? As I adventured taking pictures of all the dragons, I found myself at a shrine in the canyon near Rito Village. Getting to it was a bit of a task, so I thought there would be no chance there would be a puzzle within. But to my surprise, however... Well, this is a change of pace. Yay! Puzzle! Okay, we just gotta balance it, like so. Good enough. <laughs> That's all I needed. Oh, three different size balls now. Okay, okay. Does doing this make it roll on an angle? So we put it this way last time, so let's put it this way. So I missed! New plan. Kaboom! Yes! I did it! <laughs> From here, I head over to Rito Village and fix a bridge and take a picture of Zelda. The following morning, I find a shrine hidden in the shadow of Var Meadow's perch, and this was a pretty cool shrine. We got to launch balls at things and link at things, technically. And to end off the day, I competed at the flight range. Oh, this is hella easy. Easy, boy! We crushed it! Advanced course. Mm, 35 rings! Wow! Okay, that is a lot of money. That is going straight towards the uh, compendium fund. Oh, and I better mention, along the way I've been collecting plenty of Koroks. I've just chosen not to include every single one because, um, well, there's a lot of them. But now it was time to crush every remaining shrine. Traps. I ain't using traps. Burn! Shrine complete! Let's go! Oh, really? That's a free one? Damn it. I'm just gonna pray that the last one is some type of something. And for our final shrine on day 268, we're stripped naked again. Nice. And so we complete it and earn our final light of blessing. This is the final light of blessing. Make your way to the temple of time. There you shall find a suitable reward for your efforts. The shrine explorer. Okay. Arriving at the temple of time, I handed in all my blessings for heart containers. And to my surprise, we were missing two hearts. I think we're going to have hearts missing. Is that intended? Or have I just not picked up some hearts somewhere? Does that mean we never really full, fully regained all our hearts? Because at the very start of the game, we had both lines full. But we are now out of heart containers to acquire. I then upgraded all of the sage's ability and claimed the treasure granted for completing every shrine. Now what's in this chest? Because this was not here previously. Ancient hero's aspect. This item is said to contain the spirit of a hero who once saved Hyrule. <laughs> what? Okay, that's pretty cool, but really weird. It's like he's got Ganon's hair. Is this the Zonai Link? Can you upgrade it though? That's the question, because if you can't, then I'm not using this shit. Yes, you can upgrade it, but we're going to need a lot of materials. Frox guts and silver moblin horns. All right, so I guess we're going down into the depths. And while I'm down there, I can also finish off the map underneath. As I adventured down here, not only did I find countless abandoned mines, but I also found Queen Gibdos, and after touching light Light root after light root after light root after light root after light root. By day 275, I had finally found a frox. You thought I was gonna say mapped out the whole depths. <laughs> you would be so wrong. You wanna play like that, huh? Oh! You wanna play like that? <laughs> Yay, we beat the blue white frogs. However, we still didn't have enough frog guts to upgrade it, so I kept on mapping and kept on hunting. And while exploring, I found another underground coliseum, this time being ambushed by Yiga members. I tried to trick them wearing the Yiga set, but it appears these guys were too smart for that. And we get jumped by a Hinox. You're attacking your own member! I'm a Yiga member! What the heck? Okay, you got me. 
Defeating it, however, earned me a super cute Korok mask. And as I kept on touching light roots for the next few days, I came across more Pooh statues at the same time, purchasing both the Dark Mask and the Depths Hood. And to my surprise, found out that they also had Link's old chess piece from Breath of the Wild, the Tunic of Memories. It's basically the champion tunic without all the leather on it. So as I kept touching light roots, I gathered more and more pose to purchase that. Along the way, I stopped at another Coliseum where I defeated some Lazal foes and got Zant's helmet. I haven't played this game yet, but I think I'm gonna finally do it. And finally, by day 284, we had touched every single light route, earning me Dispelling Darkness Medal, an award for one who has conquered the darkness by lighting up every light route. Does it actually do anything? No. Okay, well, at least we did it. And to end off my day, I handed in all my pose to the Pooh statue and picked up the amazing Tunic of Memories. Ah, here we are back in Rito Village, seeing my favorite little bird, Tulan, and his dad, I guess. He makes me the great eagle bow, and I go put it on display in my house. We also get a hint as to where the final Divine Beast Helm is located, so off I go. First thing in the morning following the hints, I find a cave behind some ice. We raise the water in this underground cave and it unlocks a door, gaining me access to the final Divine Beast Helm. Later in the day, I rescued a snowboard coach and we got to compete in a cool little snowboard race. The first one went fine, but I wanted to crush the record. And so on the second attempt, I went for the sub 130. Oh, we might make the 130. Come on, do it, Lee, go! 129! Yes! Okay, I don't know what that gets us, but I was aiming for under 130 and we got it, so I'm happy. This shield is meant to celebrate that. Use it with pride. A royal shield. Well, you know what? I just dropped that on the floor. The following morning, I made my way back to Hyrule Castle to go hunting for some armor pieces. I found both missing pieces of the Royal Guard armor and went off to find the rubber armor and by the end of the day we had the full set. The next day I worked on acquiring the Phantom set and continued exploring underneath Hyrule Castle to acquire all of the soldiers armor. The next day I collected the Barbarian armor, Climbing Gear and Frostbite armor. And on day 290 we moved from the snow to the volcano where we smooth on over the lava and pick up the final piece of the embers set. And inside this cave we find a clue to find the awakening set in the Tabantha frontier. Hmm, a bit of a riddle. Following these hints and obviously not looking up a guide for it at all because I definitely know how to solve this riddle, I find the first piece of the awakening set. The next day I find the rest of the armor and my name is Linky and I'm gonna save Hyrule. I'm Toon Link. Kinda, well, I'm awakening, I'm Link. <laughs> but in the evening, I got a hint to explore the Dueling Peaks cave for another cool armor set. We'd solve a puzzle much like the puzzle we had to solve in the shrines on Dueling Peaks back in Breath of the Wild, where you had to look at the hint on the other mountain and then take that to the other mountain. Does that make sense? I don't know. Hopefully you get it. Doing so gives me the first piece of the Tingle set, the final set I needed to finish off my collection. And the following day, I get the other two pieces becoming... I am a Gimp. My name is Link. I am a Gimp. Kuala Lumpur! Kuala Lumpur! And with that, we have acquired every single piece of armor. I think. I mean, let me know. Yeah. Look, did, did, did I get them all? I think so. But to end off my evening, I fully upgraded my Ancient Heroes aspect at the Fairy Fountain. Now along my adventures, I was taking plenty of pictures of items and creatures and whatever I saw to fill in my compendium. But now it was time to head over to Roby's and purchase the missing pictures in my compendium. 40,000 rupees for all of this stuff. So 49,000 is all I need. That's not too hard, right? Now I don't have that money, but what I do have access to is YouTube. And when I typed in the fastest way to make money, I found a little glitch to give me a lot of diamonds, which meant we got a lot of money. If I run and jump and glide close enough to the ground, dropping the diamonds on the ground, the diamonds fall on the ground and also stay in my inventory. I don't know how this works, but I don't care. I'll take the free money. So I went off to sell the diamonds to fund my compendium. We've got 51,000 rupees. I don't know how this clothing shop even had that money, much money to begin with, but not my problem. I'm gonna go dump all of this into Roby. Sup Roby, I got like a billion rupees for you. You don't ask me any questions about where I got this money, and um, I won't ask you where you got all these pictures of, especially the ones of Zelda's feet. I'll buy them all. I can show you my Hyrule Compendium. It's basically your Hyrule Compendium, but you've completely filled out your Hyrule Compendium. It's beautiful. You've really outdone yourself. I've got a little special something for you. 
Ruby's fabric. Cool. Now with every single side adventure complete, my next goal was to find every single Korok. So off I went finding Korok after Korok after Korok as my mental stability began to decline rapidly. Yeah ha ha. Yeah ha ha. Yeah ha ha. I don't care if you need to reach your friend, I don't care man. Burn, Korok! Burn! Burn! Die! <laughs> and with that, we have completed the 300 days in Tears of the Kingdom. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I had a lot of fun playing this game. That's it, though. No more 100 days. That's it. Um, and if you guys enjoyed this video and you made it this far, slap, like, hit subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye. Yahoo!